Hello and welcome everyone to uh, part 3 in the PFD uh, G1000 series. Uh, and we're going to discuss in this part, okay, the CDI and uh, certain options of the PFD related to the Magenta and related to the NAV1 and the NAV2. So we've learned in the first video the basic layout and basic functionality and how to do the basic manipulations. In the second video we learned how to do, you know, how to create a flight plan and do some basic things or important things that might we might encounter with ETC, right? It pretty much covers 99.9% .9 of what might happen, okay, when in, in real life flying, or if you're flying, for example, online with uh, with ETC like Pilot Edge or VATSIM, etc. So now let's talk a little bit about that CDI again. Let's come back to it and see. Like if I click it now once, it takes me to Nav One, and look, it becomes highlighted in green. This is what the course deviation indicator is using now to, for you to navigate, to find a course to fly. And then if you press it again, it takes you to the second one. It, it, it differentiate between the two it becomes like a double green line right here as you can see and it becomes here the highlighted one on the upper left and nav2 is the one that's being used all right so let's now make use of these nav frequencies right so let me enter the seal beach frequency seal beach is 115.7 so i want to enter this one on nav1 in the first video we discussed this now i am manipulating nav2 standby i want to manipulate nav1 standby push one and two so well i'll push the nav button now it took me there now i'm going to put 115.7 big knob is to manipulate the whole numbers and the small knob is for the fractions and then I will use the switch to make it the active one here we go I will make it active but I'm not using it now the CDI using VR2 it's even written here in front of me I want it to use VR1 I will use the CDI again comes back to magenta use it one more time takes me back again to seal beach and remember the G1000 is fancy in the sense that once you see the three letter code of the fix of the VR here that means it's been identified already for you you don't need to listen to the Morse code it's done so I now have seal beaches active I'm getting I'm receiving signal from it and I can use it okay so in that case look I have now it HSI with VR1 and it's active and I have a course 159 are selected right and I can use the small knob on the right to manipulate this course right so look here you go I am I can use it now to change my course but there's a very interesting feature if I press it if I press here it will automatically give me a 2 indication a two and how to go to that station right away so if this is a two indication look at this the two arrows are in the same direction the big one for the course that is selected okay and the little one is in the same direction that means it's a two if i want to make it a from how do i know if it's a from well let me change the course now let me manipulate it keep turning it to a different course here we go look now how these two are on the opposite direction that's a from indication again if you are interested in vr navigation using an hsi i will create a video just for view of our navigation using HSIs, you know, how to intercept radials, how uh, to know where you are, which radial you're on, etc. But for here, I just want to use, show you the basic functionality of the CDI function on the Garmin 1000 PFD. Good. So now, if I want to go back and I want to fly to the station, press the course button here. We'll just press it. Here we go. And it automatically centers the needle and gives you a two indication. That means I am at the tail because it's a two indication. I am now on approximately the 110 radial uh, to Seal Beach. I am physically on the radial 110. And to fly there, I need to fly this course, course 2901. All right? And that will take me to the station. And to manipulate the course is the small uh, uh, the small knob on the right that says course and you can see here there's a little line to the little triangular knob and it says course simple as that okay let's say now I want to put a different frequency on NAV2 okay and I want to use it let's put the LAX uh, view our frequency 113.6 let's try that how now look look at the box this box is here telling you you are now changing this frequency you want to change the NAV2 standby press the button push one and two we'll press the button here we go. And I want to put in 113.6. Big knob is to manipulate the whole numbers. And the small knob is to take me to 113.6. And now to switch it, to make it the active one, I will switch it with a switch button. 113.6. Uh, here we go. It's identified. There's LAX right there. It actually gave me the three-letter abbreviation. Let's say I want to use this one to navigate. This one to navigate. I am now, the CDI is on VOR1. I will press the CDI again. And this is VOR2. Same functionality, same exact use, like uh, 
what we've done before with uh, the VOR1. If I press the course button, it's going to center it and give me a direct course to the VR station. So if I fly course 2 at 6 right now and keep the needle centered, I am flying that course to LAX VR. I am currently at the tail, so I'm approximately at 1, 1, you know, 1, 1, 6 or so. Uh, yes, a radial, I am at the tail, I'm at that radial with respect to the LAX VR. So again, I press the CDI, now I'm using the GPS to navigate. What am I using? Oh, well, look at this. I am flying the leg, as you can see in the flight plan, between John Wayne and Seal Beach. That is the leg that is active here right now with the magenta. Okay, if I press CDI one more time. Well, now I'm using the nav one. It's green, highlighted up here. Seal Beach, that's the one I'm using to navigate. I can pick a course, a radial intercept, a specific course to it, and I will know where I am with respect to it using the HSI and the nav one, as you can see here. If I would use LAX, well, press the CDI again. Now you are using nav two. Okay, the LEX, and now it's highlighted in green, as you can see, LEX, 113.6, and the course that is active right now, selected course, is 286, as you can see. And I can select any course I want using the small knob. And this is the logic behind this. I can even have a standby frequency on call, and an F2, and a standby frequency on that one, and I can switch them, okay? Switch them and you uh, and use them in, interchangeably. You know, so you can have you can populate this and use this powerful tool for navigation if you want to use radials and needles and, and so forth with VR navigation. Okay, well, let's get some basic information about this stuff here. Okay, how do I do this? We discussed this in the first video. We touched on it, and now let's put it to actual use. How do I get things to appear here, DME, etc., information, it's optional settings. I go to the main button, the PFD button, like I discussed in the first video. Press PFD. Yeah, I have the wind already showing for me. I will like this wind vector, you know, combined total vector, five knots coming from, you know, you know, this direction. But uh, DME, if I press DME, make it appear. And the DME is set to nav one so it's showing me right now what is my what is a nav one it's even telling me the frequency 115.7 one more 5.7 look at nav one is seal beach it tells me you are 11.3 miles away from seal beach right now using the dme i mean it's giving me that information but what if i want the dme to show me the distance to lax it doesn't no it doesn't get adjusted or changed from here remember pressing dme under the pfd option on the bottom it only makes it appear and disappear the actual selection of which frequency the dme will sh you know will show you the distance to as discussed in the first video go to the main menu again on the bottom press back here you go and this is the dme option on the bottom that tells you do you want to show nav one or nav two well i'll use now the knob two the i'm sorry the small knob scroll to nav two press enter here we go and i'm done i'm done so i can close this option right now close this window by pressing clear or pressing again dme it doesn't matter here you go clear it's gone now i wanted the dme to appear well that's an option in the settings or like looking at the layout of the pfd i'll press pfd I press DME, and guess what? Now it show me NAV2. I am 32.1 nautical miles away, slant distance away from the Los Angeles VOR. Very good. All right, so we know how to manipulate the DME. Like which one, it should, how do I make it show me the distance, not show me anything at all, disappear? And which NAV source it, it could use to show me the distance to? Great, bearing one and bearing two. Remember, bearing one is only gonna have options to three things, GPS, next white point, bearing to the next waypoint, or nav1, what's a nav1 frequency, or EDF if I have an EDB frequency. Let's try this. Bearing 1. Here we go. Here is a bearing to nav1, which is Seal Beach VR. And in order to show you what the bearing looks like, let's go ahead now and, and move the course away so it doesn't distract you. Here you go. I'm going to move it away. Here we go. This thin arrow, that is an RMI, all right, uh, it shows you your bearing to the Seal Beach VR, meaning this is how you go to Seal Beach VR. This is the QDM, the magnetic bearing to the Seal Beach VR, and the tail is where you are. That is the QDR, or the magnetic bearing from. I am always at the tail, the station is at the tip, right? Or I can press bearing one again, and now it's GPS. What is GPS? What is What, what bearing is it showing me? The next waypoint in the flight plan, which is Seal Beach. And it does tell you here, GPS Seal Beach. So this is the bearing to Seal Beach. Well, what if I'm flying Popper? Okay, so I highlight Piper, direct to. And 
I click Dark 2, it's the next waypoint in the flight plan. And now it's telling you, this is the bearing to Popper, right? You are on the bearing QDR at the tail of Popper. Like maybe 112, maybe 110 QDR from Popper. And to fly to Popper, my QDM or my magnetic bearing to Popper is the tip of that RMI, as you can see here. It's about 28. Uh, three to eight four etc okay so this is what it's for if i press bearing one again adf if i have an indb frequency tuned in if i do then it'll show me that you know it'll act as an edf uh, also showing the bearing to the qdm or the qdr from that adf station so the bearing one three options then have one the gps or the adf or just turn it off completely okay bearing two well logically it will be nav two gps and ADF. Again, look. Here you go. Nav2. And looks shows you the distance to that Nav2 uh, fix. If you are. It shows you the bearing. And it's a double arrow to distinguish this bearing from the other bearing. In case you have both activated at the same time. Can I? Absolutely. If I press bearing 1, here we go. Now I have two different arrows. Right? Look. Let me uh, pick something else on bearing 1. The GPS. Oh, wow. They almost bear the same bearing, everything to popper, everything else. Well, okay, so the bottom line is, is to distinguish the two, one is a double arrow, one is a single arrow. And here, the bearing one, the thin arrow, is showing me the bearing to Seal Beach. The double arrow is the nav two to that Los Angeles VR. And if I press bearing two again, it's going to be GPS to popper, just like I can do that with the first one. Both of them now are showing the bearing to popper, which doesn't make any sense. It's kind of useless, right? And if you press bearing 2 again, ADF. So think about it this way, folks. Bearing 1 could be a bearing, show, could show you a bearing to nav 1, could show you a bearing to GPS next waypoint in the flight plan, or could show you a, bear, could show you a bearing to the ADF frequency or the NDB frequency that you want. Bearing 2, be nav, bearing to nav 2, or bearing to the next waypoint in the GPS or it could be also the ADF. And when a bearing is selected, and let's say it nav1 or nav2 is identified, it's actually useful you receiving signal. In that case, you will get a bearing and you'll get a distance, okay? Just bear in mind, usually this distance is not DME distance. It's usually, um, uh, which we'll call it, it's usually a GPS distance. So let's, let's try this with bearing two for a second. Okay, in this case, because we are far, the distance is, the error is negligible, but as you get closer, you'll find out that the distance might differ, okay? So if I actually change the DME now to show nav1, so I go back to the main menu again and click DME, small knob, here you go, scroll up to nav1, enter, accept. Okay, it's pretty much also the same because we are far enough so that the error is negligible. Just just remember, bear in mind that uh, this distance, DME, is a DME distance, and this distance when you click bearing is usually a GPS distance, not a DME distance, right? Okay, so that's it. So now we know how to manipulate the CDI, uh, use it for GPS, or use it for nav1, or use it for nav2 how to make sure the DME is showing me the distance. If the, D, the distance measure equipment on board the aircraft show me distance to nav1 or nav2, I use that from the main menu on the bottom to click DME and press and go inside that with a small knob and select what you want, nav1 or nav2, etc. and press enter and that will give you the source. How to make things appear and disappear. Wind, uh, the DME, uh, you know, uh, bearing one, which could be to nav one or to the GPS or ADF. Bearing two, which is double arrow, could be to nav two or GPS or ADF. Or I want to change the unit of the altimeter. Uh, I want to show the wind, make the wind disappear, etc. This is all, think about logically, it's all under the PFD options. PFD options are all right here. This is the main thing. If you want to think about changing things or layout of things that appear or disappear on the PFD. And uh, with that, I'm pretty much done with this video. And I'll see you in the next one. We're going to discuss uh, procedures the procedures button with the uh, flight plan, you know, uh, departures, arrivals, approaches, and little gotchas and tricks that we can use uh, in order to uh, be able to use these procedures and manipulate them and understand what certain functions do when you press them or choose them. Okay, and thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.